Section 45 of The Art of Cookery Made Plain and Easy by Hannah Glass. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Appendix Part 4 From To Make Chowder A Sea Dish Take a belly piece of pickled pork, slice off the fatter parts and lay them at the bottom of the kettle strew over it onions and such sweet herbs as you can procure take a middling large cod bone and slice it as for crimping pepper salt allspice and flour it a little make a layer with part of the slices upon that a slight layer of pork again and on that a layer of biscuit and so on pursuing the like rule until the kettle is filled to about four inches cover it with a nice paste pour in about a pint of water loot down the cover of the kettle and let the top be supplied with live wood embers keep it over a slow fire about four hours when you take it up lay it in the dish pour in a glass of hot madeira wine and a very little india pepper if you have oysters or truffles and morels it is still better thicken it with butter observe before you put this sauce in to skim the stew and then lay on the crust and send it to table reverse as in the kettle cover it close with the paste which should be brown to clarify sugar after the spanish way take one pound of the best lisbon sugar nineteen pounds of water mix the white and shell of an egg then beat it up to a lather let it boil and strain it off you must let it simmer over a charcoal fire till it diminish to half a pint then put in a large spoonful of orange flower water to make spanish fritters take the inside of a roll and slice it in three then soak it in milk then pass it through a batter of eggs fry them in oil when almost done repass them in another batter then let them fry till they are done draw them off the oil and lay them in a dish over every pair of fritters you must throw cinnamon small coloured sugar plums and clarified sugar to fricassee pigeons the italian way quarter them and fry them in oil take some green peas and let them fry in the oil till they are almost ready to burst then put some boiling water to them season it with salt pepper onions garlic parsley and vinegar veal and lamb do the same way and thicken with yolk of eggs pickled beef for present use take the rib of beef stick it with garlic and cloves season it with salt jamaica pepper mace and some garlic pounded cover the meat with white wine vinegar and spanish thyme you must take care to turn the meat every day and add more vinegar if required for a fortnight then put it in a stew pan and cover it close and let it simmer on a slow fire for six hours adding vinegar and white wine if you choose you may stew a good quantity of onions it will be more palatable beef steaks after the french way take some beef steaks broil them till they are half done while the steaks are doing have ready in a stew pan some red wine a spoonful or two of gravy season it with salt pepper some shallots then take the steaks and cut in squares and put in the sauce you must put some vinegar cover it close and let it simmer on a slow fire half an hour a capon done after the french way take a quart of white wine season the capon with salt cloves and whole pepper a few shallots then put the capon in an earthen pan you must take care it has not room to shake it must be covered close and done on a slow charcoal fire to make hamburg sausages take a pound of beef mince it very small with half a pound of the best suet then mix three quarters of a pound of suet cut in large pieces 
then season it with pepper cloves nutmeg a great quantity of garlic cut small some white wine vinegar some bay salt and common salt a glass of red wine and one of rum mix all these very well together then take the largest guts you can find and stuff it very tight then hang it up in a chimney and smoke it with sawdust for a week or ten days hang them in the air till they are dry and they will keep a year they are very good boiled in peas pottage and roasted with toasted bread under it or in an amlet sausages after the german way take the crumb of a tuppenny loaf one pound of suet half a lamb's lights a handful of parsley some thyme margery and onion mince all very small then season it with salt and pepper these must be stuffed in a sheep's gut they are fried in oil or melted suet and are only fit for immediate use a turkey stuffed after the hamburg way take one pound of beef three quarters of a pound of suet mince it very small season it with salt pepper cloves mace and sweet marjoram then mix two or three eggs with it loosen the skin all round the turkey and stuff it it must be roasted chickens dressed the french way take them and quarter them then broil crumble over them a little bread and parsley when they are half done put them in a stew pan with three or four spoonfuls of gravy and double the quantity of white wine salt and pepper some fried veal balls and some suckers onions shallots and some green gooseberries or grapes when in season cover the pan close and let it stew on a charcoal fire for an hour thicken the liquor with the yolks of eggs and the juice of lemon garnish the dish with fried suckers sliced lemon and the livers a calf's head dressed after the dutch way take half a pound of spanish peas lay them in water a night then one pound of whole rice mix the peas and rice together and lay it round the head in a deep dish then take two quarts of water seasoned with pepper and salt and coloured with saffron then send it to bake chickens and turkeys dressed after the dutch way boil them season them with salt pepper and cloves then to every quart of broth put a quarter of a pound of rice or vermicelli it is eat with sugar and cinnamon the two last may be left out to make a fricassee of calf's feet and chaldron after the italian way take the crumb of a threepenny loaf one pound of suet a large onion two or three handfuls of parsley mince it very small season it with salt and pepper three or four cloves of garlic mix with eight or ten eggs then stuff the chaldron take the feet and put them in a deep stew pan it must stew upon a slow fire till the bones are loose then take two quarts of green peas and put in the liquor and when done you must thicken it with the yolks of two eggs and the juice of a lemon it must be seasoned with pepper salt mace and onion some parsley and garlic you must serve it up with the above said pudding in the middle of the dish and garnish the dish with fried suckers and sliced onion to pickle the fine purple cabbage so much admired at the great tables take two cauliflowers two red cabbages half a peck of kidney beans six sticks with six cloves of garlic on each stick wash all well give them one boil up then drain them on a sieve and lay them leaf by leaf upon a large table and salt them with bay salt then lay them a drying in the sun or in a slow oven until as dry as cork to make the pickle take a gallon of the best vinegar with one quart of water and a handful of salt and an ounce of pepper boil them let it stand till it is cold then take a quarter of a pound of ginger cut in pieces salt it let it stand a week take half a pound of mustard seed 
wash it and lay it to dry when very dry bruise half of it when half is ready for the jar lay a row of cabbage a row of cauliflowers and beans and throw betwixt every row your mustard seed some black pepper some jamaica pepper some ginger mix an ounce of the root of turmeric powdered put in the pickle which must go over all it is best when it hath been made two years though it may be used the first year to raise mushrooms cover an old hotbed three or four inches thick with fine garden mould and cover that three or four inches thick with mouldy long muck of a horse muck hill or old rotten stubble when the bed has lain some time thus prepared boil any mushrooms that are not fit for use in water and throw the water on your prepared bed in a day or two after you will have the best small button mushrooms the stag's heart water take balm four handfuls sweet marjoram one handful rosemary flowers clove gilly flowers dried dried rosebuds borage flowers of each an ounce marigold flowers half an ounce lemon peel two ounces mace and cardamom of each thirty grains of cinnamon sixty grains or yellow and white sanders of each a quarter of an ounce shavings of hartshorn an ounce take nine oranges and put in the peel then cut them in small pieces pour upon these two quarts of the best rhenish or the best white wine let it infuse three or four days being very close stopped in a cellar or cool place if it infuse nine or ten days it is better take a stag's heart and cut off all the fat and cut it very small and pour in so much rhenish or white wine as will cover it let it stand all night close covered in a cool place the next day add the aforesaid things to it mixing it very well together adding to it a pint of the best rose water and a pint of the juice of celandine if you please you may put in ten grains of saffron and so put it in a glass still distilling in water raising it well to keep in the steam both of the still and receiver to make angelica water take eight handfuls of the leaves wash them and cut them and lay them on a table to dry when they are dry put them into an earthen pot and put to them four quarts of strong wine lees let it stay for twenty-four hours but stir it twice in the time then put it into a warm still or an alembic and draw it off cover your bottles with a paper and prick holes in it so let it stand two or three days then mingle it all together and sweeten it and when it is settled bottle it up and stop it close to make milk water take the herbs agrimony endive fumitory balm elderflowers white nettles watercresses bankcresses sage each three handfuls eyebright brook lime and celandine each two handfuls the roses of yellow dock red madder fennel horseradish and licorice each three ounces raisin stoned one pound nutmegs sliced winter's bark turmeric galangal each two drams caraway and fennel seed three ounces one gallon of milk distill all with a gentle fire in one day you may add a handful of may wormwood to make slip coat cheese take six quarts of new milk hot from the cow the strokings and put to it two spoonfuls of rennet and when it is hard coming lay it into the fat with a spoon not breaking at all then press it with a four pound weight turning of it with a dry cloth once an hour and every day shifting it into fresh grass it will be ready to cut if the weather be hot in fourteen days to make a brickbat cheese 
it must be made in september take two gallons of new milk and a quart of good cream heat the cream put in two spoonfuls of rennet and when it is come break it a little then put it into a wooden mould in the shape of a brick it must be half a year old before you eat it you must press it a little and so dry it to make cordial poppy water take two gallons of very good brandy and a peck of poppies and put them together in a wide mouthed glass and let them stand forty-eight hours and then strain the poppies out take a pound of raisins of the sun stone them and an ounce of coriander seed an ounce of sweet fennel seeds and an ounce of licorice sliced bruise them all together and put them into the brandy with a pound of good powder sugar and let them stand four or eight weeks shaking it every day and then strain it off and bottle it close up for use to make white mead take five gallons of water add to that one gallon of the best honey then set it on the fire boil it together well and skim it very clean then take it off the fire and set it by then take two or three races of ginger the like quantity of cinnamon and nutmegs bruise all these grossly and put them in a little holland bag in the hot liquor and so let it stand close covered till it be cold then put as much ale yeast to it as will make it work keep it in a warm place as they do ale and when it hath wrought well tun it up at two months you may drink it having been bottled a month if you keep it four months it will be the better to make brown pottage take a piece of lean gravy beef and cut it into thin collops and hack them with the back of a cleaver have a stew pan over the fire with a piece of butter a little bacon cut thin let them be brown over the fire and put in your beef let it stew till it be very brown put in a little flour and then have your broth ready and fill up the stew pan put in two onions a bunch of sweet herbs cloves mace and pepper let all stew together an hour covered then have your bread ready toasted hard to put in your dish and strain some of the broth to it through a fine sieve put a fowl of some sort in the middle with a little boiled spinach minced in it garnishing your dish with boiled lettuces spinach and lemon to make white barley pottage with a large chicken in the middle first make your stock with an old hen a knuckle of veal a scrag end of mutton some spice sweet herbs and onions boil all together till it be strong enough then have your barley ready boiled very tender and white and strain some of it through a cullender have your bread ready toasted in your dish with some fine green herbs minced chervil spinach sorrel and put into your dish some of the broth to your bread herbs and chicken then barley strained and restrained stew all together in the dish a little while garnish your dish with boiled lettuces spinach and lemon to make a frongas incapades take three quarters of a pound of lean bacon or ham two large onions sliced four shallots and two quarts of water with a little beaten pepper cloves and mace and a pennyworth of saffron stew it gently till it is reduced to three pints and strain it through a sieve cut two fowls as for a fricassee and stew them in the broth till they are tender mix two spoonfuls of flour in two spoonfuls of vinegar and beat it up with some of the liquor till it is quite smooth and mix the whole together and boil it for ten minutes gently put sippets in a soup dish and pour it all over them you may add small forcemeat balls if you please in it or you make it of veal made in the form of veal olives and you may send it in a tureen if you like to make a scotch haggis take the lights heart and chitterlings of a calf chop them very fine 
and a pound of suet chopped fine season with pepper and salt to your palate mix in a pound of flour or oatmeal roll it up and put it into a calf's bag and boil it an hour and a half will do it some add a pint of good thick cream and put in a little beaten mace cloves or nutmeg or allspice is very good in it to make it sweet with fruit take the meat and suet as above and flour with beaten mace cloves and nutmeg to your palate a pound of currants washed very clean a pound of raisins stoned and chopped fine half a pint of sack mix all well together and boil it in the calf's bag two hours you must carry it to table in the bag it was boiled in end of section forty five section forty six of the art of cookery made plain and easy by hannah glass this librivox recording is in the public domain appendix part five from to make sauerkraut take your fine hard white cabbage cut them very small have a tub on purpose with the head out according to the quantity you intend to make put them in the tub to every four or five cabbages throw in a large handful of salt when you have done as many as you intend lay a very heavy weight on them to press them down as flat as possible throw a cloth on them and lay on the cover let them stand a month then you may begin to use it it will keep twelve months but be sure to keep it always close covered and the weight on it if you throw a few caraway seeds pounded fine amongst it they give it a fine flavour the way to dress it is with a fine fat piece of beef stewed together it is a dish much made use of amongst the germans and in the north countries where the frost kills all the cabbages therefore they preserve them in this manner before the frost takes them cabbage stalks cauliflower stalks and artichoke stalks peeled and cut fine down in the same manner are very good to keep green peas beans etc and fruit fresh and good till christmas observe to gather all your things on a fine clear day in the increase or full moon take well glazed earthen or stone pots quite new that have not been laid in water wipe them clean lay in your fruit very carefully and take great care none is bruised or damaged in the least nor too ripe but just in their prime stop down the jar close and pitch it and tie a leather over do kidney beans the same bury two feet deep in the earth and keep them there till you have occasion for them do peas and beans the same way only keep them in the pods and do not let your peas be either too young or too old the one will run to water and the other the worm will eat as to the two latter lay a layer of fine writing sand and a layer of pods and so on till full the rest as above flowers you may keep the same way to make pacolilla or indian pickle the same the mangoes came over in take a pound of raced ginger and lay it in water one night then scrape it and cut it in thin slices and put to it some salt and let it stand in the sun to dry take long pepper two ounces and do it as the ginger take a pound of garlic and cut it in thin slices and salt it and let it stand three days then wash it well and let it be salted again and stand three days more then wash it well and drain it and put it in the sun to dry take a quarter of a pound of mustard seeds bruised and half a quarter of an ounce of turmeric put these ingredients when prepared into a large stone or glass jar with a gallon of very good white wine vinegar and stir it very often for a fortnight and tie it up close 
in this pickle you may put white cabbage cut in quarters and put in a brine of salt and water for three days and then boil fresh salt and water and just put in the cabbage to scald and press out the water and put it in the sun to dry in the same manner as you do cauliflowers cucumbers melons apples french beans plums or any sort of fruit take care they are well dried before you put them into the pickle you need never empty the jar but as the things come in season put them in and supply it with vinegar as often as there is occasion if you would have your pickle look green leave out the turmeric and green them as usual and put them into this pickle cold in the above you may do walnuts in a jar by themselves put the walnuts in without any preparation tied close down and kept some time to preserve cucumbers equal with any italian sweetmeat take fine young gherkins of two or three different sizes put them into a stone jar cover them well with vine leaves fill the jar with spring water cover it close let it stand near the fire so as to be quite warm for ten days or a fortnight then take them out and throw them into spring water they will look quite yellow and stink but you must not mind that have ready your preserving pan take them out of that water and put them into the pan cover them well with vine leaves fill it with spring water set it over a charcoal fire cover them close and let them simmer very slow look at them often and when you see them turn quite of a fine green take off the leaves and throw them into a large sieve then into a coarse cloth four or five times doubled when they are cold put them into the jar and have ready your syrup made of double refined sugar in which boil a great deal of lemon peel and whole ginger pour it hot over them and cover them down close do it three times pare your lemon peel very thin and cut them in long thin bits about two inches long the ginger must be well boiled in water before it is put in the syrup take long cucumbers cut them in halves scoop out the inside do them the same way they eat very fine in minced pies or puddings or boil the syrup to a candy and dry them on sieves the jews way of preserving salmon and all sorts of fish take either salmon cod or any large fish cut off the head wash it clean and cut it in slices as crimped cod is dry it very well in a cloth then flour it and dip it in yolks of eggs and fry it in a great deal of oil till it is of a fine brown and well done take it out and lay it to drain till it is very dry and cold whitings mackerel and flat fish are done whole when they are quite dry and cold lay them in your pan or vessel throw in between them a good deal of mace cloves and sliced nutmeg a few bay leaves have your pickle ready made of the best white wine vinegar in which you must boil a great many cloves of garlic and shallot black and white pepper jamaica and long pepper juniper berries and salt when the garlic begins to be tender the pickle is enough when it is quite cold pour it on your fish and a little oil on the top they will keep good a twelve month and are to be eat cold with oil and vinegar they will go good to the east indies all sorts of fish fried well in oil eat very fine cold with shallot or oil and vinegar observe in the pickling of your fish to have the pickle ready first put a little pickle in then a layer of fish then pickle then a little fish and so lay them down very close to be well covered put a little saffron in the pickle frying fish in common oil is not so expensive with care for present use a little dose and if the cook is careful not to burn the oil or black it it will fry them two or three times 
to preserve tripe to go to the east indies get a fine belly of tripe quite fresh take a four gallon cask well hooped lay in your tripe and have your pickle ready made thus take seven quarts of spring water and put as much salt into it as will make an egg swim that the little end of the egg may be about an inch above the water you must take care to have the fine clear salt for the common salt will spoil it add a quart of the best white wine vinegar two sprigs of rosemary an ounce of allspice pour it on your tripe let the cooper fasten the cask down directly when it comes to the indies it must not be opened till it is just going to be dressed for it will not keep after the cask is opened the way to dress it is lay it in water half an hour then fry it or boil it as we do here the manner of dressing various sorts of dried fish as stockfish cod salmon whitings etc the general rule for steeping of dried fish the stockfish excepted all the kinds except stockfish are salted or either dried in the sun as the most common way or in prepared kilns or by the smoke of wood fires in chimney corners and in either case require the being softened and freshened in proportion to their bulk their nature or dryness the very dry sort as bacalio codfish or whiting and such like should be steeped in lukewarm milk and water the steeping kept as near as possible to an equal degree of heat the larger fish should be steeped twelve the small as whiting etc about two hours the cod are therefore laid to steep in the evening the whitings etc in the morning before they are to be dressed after the time of steeping they are to be taken out and hung up by the tails until they are dressed the reason of hanging them up is that they soften equally as in the steeping without extracting too much of the relish which would make them insipid when thus prepared the small fish as whiting tusk and such like are floured and laid on the gridiron and when a little hardened on the one side must be turned and basted with oil upon a feather and when basted on both sides and well hot through taken up alway observing that as sweet oil supples and supplies the fish with a kind of artificial juices so the fire draws out those juices and hardens them therefore be careful not to let them broil too long no time can be prescribed because of the difference of fires and various bigness of the fish a clear charcoal fire is much the best and the fish kept at a good distance to broil gradually the best way to know when they are enough is they will swell a little in the basting and you must not let them fall again the sauces are the same as usual to salt fish and garnish with oysters fried in batter but for a supper for those that like sweet oil the best sauce is oil vinegar and mustard beat up to a consistence and served up in sauces if boiled as the great fish usually are it should be in milk and water but not so properly boiled as kept just simmering over an equal fire in which way half an hour will do the largest fish and five minutes the smallest some people broil both sorts after simmering and some pick them to pieces and then toss them up in a pan with fried onions and apples they are either way very good and the choice depends on the weak or strong stomachs of the eaters dried salmon must be differently managed for though a large fish they do not require more steeping than a whiting and when laid on the gridiron should be moderately peppered the dried herring instead of milk and water should be steeped the like time as the whiting in small beer and to which as to all kinds of broiled salt fish sweet oil will always be found the best basting 
and no ways affect even the delicacy of those who do not love oil stock fish are very different from those before mentioned they being dried in the frost without salt are in their kind very insipid and are only eatable by the ingredients that make them so and the art of cookery they should be first beat with a sledgehammer on an iron anvil or on a very solid smooth oaken block and when reduced almost to atoms the skin and bones taken away and the remainder of the fish steeped in milk and warm water until very soft then strained out and put into a soup dish with new milk powdered cinnamon mace and nutmeg the chief part cinnamon a paste round the edge of the dish and put in a temperate oven to simmer for about an hour and then served up in the place of pudding note well the italians eat the skin boiled either hot or cold and most usually with oil and vinegar preferring the skin to the body of the fish the way of curing mackerel buy them as fresh as possible split them down the backs open them flat take out the guts and wash the fish very clean from the blood hang them up by the tails to drain well do this in the cool of the evening or in a very cool place strew salt at the bottom of the pan sprinkle the fish well with clean salt lay them in the pan belly to belly and back to back let them lie in the salt about twelve hours wash the salt clean off in the pickle hang them again up by the tails half an hour to drain pepper the insides moderately and lay them to dry on inclining stones facing the sun never leaving them out when the sun is off nor lay them out before the sun has dispersed the dews and the stones you lay them on be dry and warm a week's time of fine weather perfectly cures them when cured hang them up by their tails belly to belly in a very dry place but not in sea coal smoke it will spoil their flavour to dress cured mackerel either fry them in boiling oil and lay them to drain or broil them before or on a very clear fire in the last case baste them with oil and a feather sauce will be very little wanting as they will be very moist and mellow if good in kind otherwise you may use melted butter and crimped parsley calves feet stewed cut a calf's foot in four pieces put it into a saucepan with half a pint of soft water and a middling potato scrape the outside skin clean off slice it thin and a middling onion peeled and sliced thin some beaten pepper and salt cover it close and let it stew very softly for about two hours after it boils be sure to let it simmer as softly as you can eat it without any other sauce it is an excellent dish to make fricandillas take two pounds of lean veal and half a pound of kidney suet chopped small the crumb of a tuppenny french roll soaked in hot milk and squeeze the milk out put it to the veal season it pretty high with pepper and salt and grated nutmeg make it into balls as big as a teacup with the yolks of eggs over it and fry them in butter till they are of a fine light brown have a quart of veal broth in a stew pan stew them gently three quarters of an hour thicken it with butter rolled in flour and add the juice of half a lemon put it in a dish with the sauce over and garnish with notched lemon and beetroot to make a fine bitter take an ounce of the finest jesuit powder half a quarter of an ounce of snake root powder half a quarter of an ounce of salt of wormwood half a quarter of saffron half a quarter of cochineal put it into a quart of the best brandy and let it stand twenty-four hours every now and then shaking the bottle an approved method practised by mrs dukeley the queen's tirewoman 
to preserve hair and make it grow thick take one quart of white wine put in one handful of rosemary flowers half a pound of honey distill them together then add a quarter of a pint of oil of sweet almonds shake it very well together put a little of it into a cup warm it blood warm rub it well on your head and comb it dry to make carolina snowballs take half a pound of rice wash it clean divide it into six parts take six apples pare them and scoop out the core in which place put a little lemon peel shred very fine then have ready some thin cloths to tie the balls in put the rice in the cloth and lay the apple on it tie them up close put them into cold water and when the water boils they will take an hour and a quarter boiling be very careful how you turn them into the dish that you do not break the rice and they will look as white as snow and make a very pretty dish the sauce is to this quantity a quarter of a pound of fresh butter melted thick a glass of white wine a little nutmeg and beaten cinnamon made very sweet with sugar boil all up together and pour it into a basin and send to table a carolina rice pudding take half a pound of rice wash it clean put it into a saucepan with a quart of milk keep stirring it till it is very thick take great care it does not burn then turn it into a pan and grate some nutmeg into it and two teaspoonfuls of beaten cinnamon a little lemon peel shred fine six apples pared and chopped small mix all together with the yolks of three eggs and sweeten to your palate then tie it up close in a cloth put it into boiling water and be sure to keep it boiling all the time an hour and a quarter will boil it melt butter and pour over it and throw some fine sugar all over it a little white wine in the sauce will be a great addition to it to distill treacle water lady monmouth's way take three ounces of hartshorn shaved and boiled in borage water or succory wood sorrel or respice water or three pints of any of these waters boiled to a jelly and put the jelly and hartshorn both into the still and add a pint more of these waters when you put it into the still take the roots of elecampane gentian cypress tunnensil of each an ounce blessed thistle called carduus and angelica of each an ounce sorrel roots two ounces borm sweet marjoram and burnet of each half a handful lily con valley flowers borage bugloss rosemary and marigold flowers of each two ounces citron rinds carduous seeds and citron seeds alchemy's berries and cochineal each of these an ounce prepare all these simples thus gather the flowers as they come in season and put them in glasses with a large mouth and put with them as much good sack as will cover them and tie up the glasses close with bladders wet in the sack with a cork and leather tied upon it close adding more flowers and sack as occasion is and when one glass is full take another till you have your quantity of flowers to distill put cochineal into a pint bottle with half a pint of sack and tie it up close with a bladder under the cork and another on the top wet with sack tied up close with brown thread and then cover it up close with leather and bury it standing upright in a bed of hot horse dung for nine or ten days look at it and if dissolved take it out of the dung but do not open it until you distill slice all the roses beat the seeds and the alchemy's berries and put them into another glass amongst all put no more sack than needs and when you intend to distill take a pound of the best venice treacle and dissolve it in six pints of the best white wine and three of red rose water 
and put all the ingredients into a basin and stir them all together and distill them in a glass still belneum marie open not the ingredients till the same day you distill End of section 46section 47 of the art of cookery made plain and easy by hannah glass this librivox recording is in the public domain receipts for perfumery etc advertisement the following collection of approved receipts in perfumery hath been added to this edition of the art of cookery in order to render the work of more extensive utility than the former and which it is presumed will be considered by the reader as a valuable acquisition receipts for perfumery etc to make red light or purple wash balls get some white soap beat it in a mortar then put it into a pan and cover it down close let the same be put into a copper so that the water does not come to the top of the pan then cover your copper as close as you can to stop the steam make the water boil some time take the pan out and beat it well with a wooden stirrer till it is all melted with the heat of the water then pour it out into drops and cut them into square pieces as small as a walnut let it lie three days on an oven in a band box afterwards put them into a pan and damp them with rose water mash it well with your hands and mould them according to your fancy that is squeeze them as hard and as close as you possibly can make them very round and put them into a bandbox or a sieve two or three days then scrape them with a little washball scraper which are made for that purpose and let them lie eight or nine days afterwards scrape them very smooth and to your mind note well if you would have them red when you first mash them put in a little vermilion if light some hair powder and if purple some rose pink to make blue red or purple wash balls or to marble ditto get some white soap and cut it into square pieces about the bigness of dice let it lie in a bandbox or a sieve on the top of an oven to dry beat it in a mortar to a powder and put it into a pan damp it with rose water mix it well with your hands put in some hair powder to make it stiff then scent it with oil of thyme and oil of caraways if you would have them blue put in some powder blue if red some vermilion if purple some rose pink mix them well together with your hands and squeeze them as close as possible make them very round of a size agreeable to your mind put them into a sieve two or three days then scrape them a little with a washball scraper and let them lie in the sieve eight or nine days afterwards scrape them very smooth and agreeable to your mind if you would have them marbled after being scented with oil of thyme and oil of caraways as in the first process cut them into pieces about as much as will make a ball each make it into a flat square piece then take a very thin knife and dip it into the powder blue vermilion or rose pink according to the colour you would fancy and chop it in according to your mind double it up and make it into a hard and round ball and use the same process as before mentioned white almond wash balls take some white soap and slice it thin put it in a bandbox on the top of an oven to dry three weeks or more when it is dry beat it in a mortar till it is a powder to every four ounces of soap add one ounce of hair powder half an ounce of white lead put them into a pan and damp them with rose water to make it of a proper consistency make them into balls as hard and close as possible 
scrape them with a ball scraper and use the same process as before mentioned letting them lie three weeks in a sieve to dry then finish them with a ball scraper to your mind brown almond wash balls take some common brown hard soap slice it thin and put it in a bandbox on the top of an oven to dry for the space of three weeks or more when quite dry beat it in a mortar to a powder to every three ounces of soap add one ounce of brown almond powder put it in a mortar and damp it with rose water to make it of a proper consistency beat it very well then make them into balls according to a process before mentioned letting them lie three weeks in a sieve to dry then finish them with a ball scraper agreeable to your mind to make lip salve take half a pound of hog's lard put it into a pan with one ounce and a half of virgin wax let it stand on a slow fire till it is melted then take a small tin pot and fill it with water and put therein some alkanet root let it boil till it is of a fine red colour then strain some of it and mix it with the ingredients according to your fancy and scent it with essence of lemon pour it into small boxes and smooth the top with your finger note well you may pour a little out first to see if it is of a proper colour to your fancy a stick or composition to take hair out by the roots take two ounces and a half of rosin and one ounce of beeswax melt them together and make them into sticks for use to make white lip salve and for chopped hands and face six shillings and threepence per pot melt some spermaceti in sweet oil add thereto a small bit of white wax when it is melted put in a small quantity of white sugar candy and stir it well therein then pour it into pots for use french rouge five shillings per pot take some carmine and mix it with hair powder to make it as pale as you please according to your fancy opiate for the teeth two shillings and sixpence per pot take one pound of honey let it be very well boiled and skimmed a quarter of a pound of bowl ammoniac one ounce of dragon's blood one ounce of oil of sweet almonds half an ounce of oil of cloves eight drops of essence of bergamot one gill of honey water mix all well together and pour it into pots for use delescott's opiate half an ounce of bowl ammoniac one ounce of powder of myrrh one ounce of dragon's blood half an ounce of orris root half an ounce of rock alum half an ounce of ground ginger two ounces of honey mix all well together and put it in pots for use to make shaving oil one shilling per bottle dissolve a quantity of oil soap cut into thin slices in spirits of wine let it stand a week then put in as much soft soap till the liquor becomes a clammy substance scent as you please and bottle it for use to take iron moulds out of linen and grease out of woollen or silk one shilling a bottle take four ounces of spirits of turpentine and one ounce of essence of lemon mix them well together and put it into bottles for use wash for the face take one quart of milk a quarter of a pound of saltpetre beaten to a powder put in two pennyworth of oil of aniseed one pennyworth of oil of cloves about four thimbles full of the best white wine vinegar put it into a bottle and let it stand in sand half way up in the sun or in some warm place for a fortnight without the cork afterwards cork and seal it up liquid for the hair two shillings a quarter of a pint to three quarts of sweet oil put a quarter of a pound of alkanet root cut in small pieces 
let it be boiled some time over a steam add thereto three ounces of oil of jessamine and one ounce of oil of lavender strain it through a coarse cloth but do not squeeze it to make white almond paste take one pound of bitter almonds blanch and beat them very fine in a mortar put in the whites of four eggs one ounce of french white of Troyes. add some rose water and spirits of wine a little at a time until it is of a consistency for paste to make brown almond paste take one pound of bitter almonds beat them well in a mortar add to them one pound of raisins of the sun stoned beat and mix them very well together and put in a little brandy sweet scented bags to lay with linen at one shilling and sixpence two shillings and sixpence etc 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 each bag eight ounces of coriander seeds eight ounces of sweet orris root eight ounces of damask rose leaves eight ounces of calamus aromaticus one ounce of mace one ounce of cinnamon half an ounce of cloves four drams of musk powder two drams of white loaf sugar three ounces of lavender flowers and some rhodium wood beat them well together and make them in small silk bags honey water one shilling per bottle one quart of rectified spirits of wine two drams of tincture of ambergris two drams of tincture of musk half a pint of water filter it according to your fancy and put it into small bottles orange butter melt a small quantity of spermaceti in sweet oil and put in a little fine dutch pink to colour it then add a little oil of orange to scent it and lastly while it is very hot put in some spirits of wine to curdle it lemon butter is made the same as orange butter only put in no dutch pink and scent it with essence of lemons instead of oil of orange marischal powder sixteen shillings per pound one ounce of cloves one ounce of mace one ounce of cinnamon beat them very well to a fine powder add to them four pounds of hair powder and half a pound of spanish burnt amber beaten very fine a quarter of an ounce of oil of lavender half an ounce of oil of thyme a quarter of an ounce of essence of amber five drops of oil of laurel a quarter of an ounce of oil of sassafras mix them all well together virgin's milk two shillings per bottle put one ounce of tincture of benjamin into a pint of cold water mix it well and let it stand one day then run it through a flannel bag with some tow in it put it in bottles for use eau de bouquet take one quart of spirits of wine half an ounce of musk two drams of tincture of saffron mix them well together and let them stand one day then filter it with any water the ambrosia nosegay take one pint of spirits of wine one dram of oil of cloves one ounce of oil of nutmegs mix them and filter it as you please pearl water mix pearl powder with honey and lavender water and then the pearl powder will never be discoloured odor loose two ounces of the best rectified spirits of wine one dram of oil of amber two drams of salt of tartar prepared powder of amber two drams twenty drops of oil of nutmegs put them all into a bottle and shake it well let it stand five hours then filter it and always keep it by you and when you would make odor loose put it into the stronger spirits of sal ammoniac milk fluid water one quart of spirits of wine half an ounce of oil of cloves one dram of essence of lemons fifteen drops of oil of rhodium a little cochineal in powder to colour it of a fine pink let it stand one day then filter it but with no water 
miss in her teens one quart of spirits of wine essence of bergamot one ounce oil of rhodium two drams tincture of musk half a dram and half a pint of water mix them well together and put them into bottles for use lady lily's ball take twelve ounces of oil soap shaved very fine spermaceti three ounces melt them together two ounces of bismuth dissolved in rose water for the space of three hours one ounce of oil of thyme one ounce of the oil of caraways one ounce of essence of lemons mix all well together hard pomatum take three pounds of mutton suet boil and skim it well till it is quite clear pour it off from the dross which remains at the bottom then add thereto eight ounces of virgin wax melt them together and scent it with essence of lemon make it into rolls according to fancy soft pomatum take a quantity of hog's lard boil and skim it very well put in a small quantity of hair powder when it is cool to make it agreeable to your mind and scent it with essence of lemons note well you may take a small quantity out first and let it cool if it is too soft add a little hair powder to make it stiffer nun's cream one ounce of pearl powder twenty drops of oil of rhodium and two ounces of fine pomatum mix all well together au sans pareil one quart of spirits of wine one ounce of essence of bergamot two drams of tincture of musk add to them half a pint of water and bottle them for use beautifying water is balsanium cosmeticum a small quantity put into elderflower water lozenges for the heartburn take one pound of chalk beat it to a powder in a mortar with one pound and a half of white loaf sugar and one ounce of bowl ammoniac mix them well together and put in something to moisten them to make it of a proper consistency or paste make them into small lozenges and let them lie in a bandbox on the top of an oven a week or more to dry shaking the box sometimes lozenges for a cold take two pounds of common white loaf sugar beat it well in a mortar dissolve six ounces of spanish licorice in a little warm water one ounce of gum arabic dissolved likewise add thereto a little oil of aniseed mix them well to a proper consistency and cut them into small lozenges let them lie in a bandbox on the top of an oven a considerable time to dry shaking the box sometimes to make dragon roots take some mallow roots skin them and pick one end with a pin or needle till you have made it like a brush then take some powder of brazil and some cochineal boil them together and put in the roots till you think they are thoroughly dyed then take them out and lay them by the fire to dry to make shaving powder take some white soap and shave it in very thin slices let it be well dried on the top of an oven in a bandbox beat it in a mortar till it is very fine sift it through a fine sieve and scent it as you please Windsor soap, two shillings per pound. Get some of the whiter soap, shave it into thin slices, melt it in a stew pan over a slow fire, and scent it very strong with oil of caraways. Pour it into a drawer made for that purpose. Let it stand three days or more, and cut it into square pieces to your fancy. Soap to fill shaving boxes take some of the whitest soap beat it in a mortar and scent it with oil of caraways make it flat then chop in some vermilion or powder blue to marble it with a very thin knife dipped in the same double it up and squeeze it hard into the boxes then scrape it smooth with a knife 
tooth powder one shilling per bottle burn some rock alum and beat it in a mortar sift it fine then take some rose pink and mix them well together to make it of a pale red colour add thereto a little powder of myrrh and put it into bottles for use cold cream take one pint of trotter oil a quarter of a pound of hog's lard one ounce of spermaceti a bit of virgin wax warm them together with a little rose water and beat it up with a whisk the genuine receipt to make turlington's balsam balsam of peru one ounce best storax two ounces benjamin impregnated with sweet almonds three ounces aloes succotorine myrrh elect purest frankincense roots of angelica flowers of st john's wort of each of these half an ounce beat the drugs well in a mortar and put them into a large glass bottle add thereto a pint or rather more of the best spirits of wine and let the bottle stand by the kitchen fire or in the chimney corner two days and two nights then decant it off in smaller bottles for use and let them be well corked and sealed note well the same quantity of spirits of wine poured on the ingredients letting them stand by the fire or in some warm place for the space of six days and nights will serve for common use pour off the same in small bottles and let them be well corked and sealed to make syrup de capillaire put seven pounds of common lump sugar into a pan and thereto add seven pints of water boil it well and keep skimming it then take the white of an egg put it in some water and beat it up well with a whisk take the froth off and scatter it therein and keep it skimming until it is quite clear then add thereto half a pint of orange flower water mix it well together let it stand till cold and put it into a stone bottle or in bottles for use let them be quite clean and dry before it is put into them otherwise it will make it mothery and spoil it note well if you choose to have it of a high colour burn a little sugar in a pan of a brown colour afterwards put a little capillaire thereto stir it about with a wooden spoon and mix it well with the capillaire according to your fancy for a consumption an approved receipt by a lady at paddington take the yolk of a new-laid egg beat it up well with three large spoonfuls of rose water mix it well in half a pint of new milk from the cow sweeten it well with syrup de capillaire and grate some nutmeg in it drink it every morning fasting for a month and refrain from spirituous liquors of any kind note well mr powell who kept the crown a public house in swallow street st james's was in so deep a decline as to be scarce able to walk when he coughed the phlegm he brought from his stomach was green and yellow and he was given over by his physician who as the last resource advised him to go into the country to try what the air would do he happily went to lodge at paddington the woman of the house understanding his condition recollected that an old lady who had lodged in the same house had left a book with a collection of receipts in it for various disorders instantly fetched it and found the foregoing which he having strictly followed found himself much better in a fortnight and by continuing the same in less than a month he began to have an appetite and with the blessing of god in a short time by degrees he recovered his health to the astonishment and surprise of all who knew him and declared to me he was as well and hearty as ever he was in his life and did not scruple to tell every person the means and method of his recovery note well this receipt i had from his own mouth to stop a violent purging or the flux 
take a third part of a gill of the very best double distilled aniseed grate a third part of a large nutmeg into it to be taken the same quantity an hour after breakfast one hour after dinner and if occasion an hour before going to bed probatum est for obstructions in the womb succatorine aloes one ounce cardamom seed a quarter of an ounce snake root a quarter of an ounce gum myrrh a quarter of an ounce saffron a quarter of an ounce cochineal two scruples zedori two scruples rhubarb two scruples let these drugs be well beaten in a mortar and put them into a large bottle add thereto a pint and a half of mountain wine place it near the fire for the space of three days and nights shaking it often let the patient take a small teacupful twice a week in the morning an hour before rising another four obstructions three pennyworth of alchemies two pennyworth of venice treacle and a quarter of an ounce of spermaceti to be made into four boluses one to be taken every evening going to bed half a pint of penny royal water a quarter of a pint of hysteric water and a quarter of a pint of peppermint water to be taken every morning and evening a teacup ball for a hoarseness two ounces of penny royal water the yolk of a new laid egg beaten thirty drops of cochineal twenty drops of oil of aniseed mixed well and sweetened with white sugar candy a large spoonful to be taken night and morning end of section 47 end of the art of cookery made plain and easy by hannah glass